Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I want to take a look at home networking devices. Now this is one of a series of videos I will be doing on home network devices and the idea of the videos is basically to introduce uh, you to basic networking devices. And we'll start off in this video with routers but we're going to look at uh, switches, we're going to look at access points and, and things like that. Now the idea is that most people aren't computer computer experts, they're certainly not networking experts but today everyone's reliant on the internet especially with a lot of people now working from home and there is a big interest and a big need to have a basic understanding of how a home network fits together, how it works and without that kind of understanding uh, it's I almost impossible to actually troubleshoot very simple um, networking or internet uh, issues so a lot of these these issues that people have with their network or the internet are actually quite basic and they're quite easy to troubleshoot once you understand what is actually going on and what each of the the components do and how the components work together and the various services that are involved in actually getting an internet connection and getting uh, traffic from your own network onto the internet and, and vice versa. So the idea of these videos is basically to give you an understanding of basic home networking, in particular the components that make up the home network and how they connect off to the internet. So in this video we're going to start by looking at routers or more precisely we're going to look at home routers. Now what does a home router do? Well quite simply it connects the home network to the internet. Now it's the single most important device on your home network um, without it you can't connect to the internet and for lots of small networks it's probably the only uh, networking device you have on the network uh, if you live in a small home or reasonable size home you probably don't need any additional wireless access points or you don't need any uh, extensions to the network everything goes to the router now this diagram here shows a, a typical configuration on this side here we have a home network with various devices on there uh, computers, uh, mobile phones etc. On the right hand side of it we have an uh, internet connection through an internet service provider ISP. Now in all countries the ISPs were originally telephone companies and many of them still are like AT&T, BT in, in the UK and the very first internet connections and the internet connections today uh, were provided uh, via the old telephone cables, the copper cables, and they were provided using modems in the very early days, uh, if anyone remembers uh, modems, and then they moved on to ADSL, analog digital, analog digital subscriber line, and VDSL, uh, which is used in um, conjunction with fiber, what they call fiber to the curb. Now, what we have here is the router connected via a broadband filter. This filter makes it possible to use the telephone and the internet uh, at the same time. This stops the two signals interfering with each other. Uh, that plugs into a, a socket here. Now in today's uh, environment often the filter is incorporated into the socket but to say I'm using uh, ones that aren't so my filter is external to the socket and the socket connects off over this side here to the uh, telephone exchange and if it's using ADSL it's copper all the way to the telephone exchange if it's using VDSL it's copper up into a, uh, an access point somewhere in the UK there are green cabinets in the street and after that it goes fiber so there it goes fiber that's uh, VDSL I can't remember what the V stands for but the DSL stands for digital subscriber line so we have ADSL and VDSL. Now VDSL is the, the most modern one. And if we look at the fiber alternative here, we have the router, the home network, and this time we have a modem, and then we connect to the fiber. Now the purpose of the modem is to connect the electrical signals from the router into light signals for the fiber. Now you might just say, well, do we have a, a modem on the other one? Well we do but it's integrated in part of the router so you don't usually have an external modem in this configuration it's actually part of the router. 
No, routers, home routers, are combination devices on modern networks. They're, they're not just doing a routing function, they're also doing a switch function, and you'll find Ethernet ports on this device here, and you'll also find normally a wireless access point. So they're, they're often called wi wireless routers, Wi-Fi routers, because they have antennas sticking out of them, and you can connect your wireless devices into the, into the router, uh, which is why I say on very small networks you only have a single router on the network and all the devices, the mobile phones etc connect into this router here and off onto the internet so you only have one device to worry about. In larger networks coming out here then we have other access points here so we might have another wireless access point here to, ex to extend it what's called a WAP and that extends the, the network further on we we'll talk about that in another video. Um, the connection here from here to the telephone socket uses a telephone, a standard telephone cable, and you'll see the the port on the on the router. It's it's got a te uh, standard telephone connection. You plug it in here. Whereas for the fiber one here, it's usually labelled WAN, which stands for Wide Area Network, and it uses a, a standard Ethernet cable to connect the router into the into the modem here. So one uses an Ethernet cable, which is this one here, and the other one using a standard telephone cable to connect into the telephone socket. And in the case of the fiber, the, the wall socket will be different um, than you see in the standard telephone connection. Now, this is also the same basic same setup for cable networks. So if you've got cable networks, you'll have a very similar setup where you connect the WAN port here into a, into a modem. A cable modem. Okay, this is just a, a better diagram showing you fibre to the curb. So we have the house here, we have um, the standard copper telephone line here going to the green cabinet. This is the UK. And from the green cabinet here, we have fibre back to the telephone exchange, the ISP uh, office. And just a quick summary we've got. Uh, four main interconnect technology types uh, that you need to be aware of when you're I buying a router if you're replacing your, your home router. There are ADSL which is old now and not very common. Uh, VDSL which is probably the most common one today which uses this setup here. And we have fiber used with uh, fiber to the premises. This is fiber direct from the ISP into the house. And we have cable which is in the UK is very limited. It's in those areas where the cable TV networks operated and in the UK there weren't that many. Okay, now there is a fifth alternative and this is growing in importance and it's home routers without a landline and basically it looks like your standard uh, home router. Now this is actually an image from a TP-Link um, MR640 or 00 and basically it's a router and it takes a SIM card and instead of connecting to your ISP via the fiber network or the or telephone network it actually connects to the mobile network so this connects just like your mobile phone to the mobile network and most people are familiar with this setup because they use the mobile phone directly to connect to the mobile network and to the internet this just uses a router to do the same thing and the advantage of using this is the fact that you can actually share that internet connection. Now these devices were originally introduced for people traveling or for people going on holiday that needed to actually connect to the internet and share that internet connection maybe with a family but they're actually becoming more and more popular as a lot of people are opting out of the old traditional um, landline and just using mobile phones. So how do they connect to the internet? Well this is an ideal way for them to connect to the internet without requiring a landline. So this I expect, especially with the coming 5G networks, to become more and more popular. Now a bit about the speeds here, the maximum speeds theoretically is around 160 megabits, this is with 4G technology, uh, but it's usually much slower and this is taken from actually a Google search in the UK and you can see here, this is from a, a, the provider uh, EE, and you can see the speeds 
8 to 10, what they, they're quoting here, with possible instances of 40 megabits. That's nowhere near the 160 th theoretical maximum. Typical upload, typical upload speeds are between 5 and 6, and possibly up to 15 megabits. So quite a bit different from what is the actual theoretical maximum. Okay, so now I want to take a, a look at a few actual products. Now, I'm not going to make product recommendations. I don't do that. I just want to do a search for some routers, and we want to go through the specifications so you can actually see what different types of routers there are. Uh, this is important when you're actually buying your own router, to maybe to replace an existing one or to upgrade an existing one. So let's just type in router without a specific type. And you can see here straight away, you see this one here, it actually says straight away this is an ADSL VDSL router here. Now we've got a, an Amazon Mesh router. It doesn't say straight away there, we need to go into the details to find out whether that's an ADSL VDSL router. It is a TP Link router. I think this is similar to the one I have. And here's another one. And notice here this is a cable router. Now when you're choosing these, the they're almost always always Wi-Fi today, so I haven't seen a Ethernet only router for a long time. So they've got Ethernet, they got it's gonna have Ethernet ports on the back if they show you a picture of this on the back. Let's have a quick look at it. So here's the back of it. You can see the Ethernet port, and here, this here, this blue one is actually labelled a WAN port. Um, I can't get any better than that. And this is a cable router, so this, there's no telephone jack connection here. If it was a VDSL router, you'd see a telephone jack connection here, and this time you're seeing a WAN connection here. So this router, this type of router you, you'd use if you'd got fibre or if you'd got cable internet. So let's take a quick look at the features. Now I'm not going to go into detail on these. If there's enough interest, I will do another video and I'll explain uh, the common router features and things that I think are, are important for you to look at. But generally speaking, the more expensive the router, the more features it has. Now the price is vary quite considerably from low end about £40 all the way to several hundred pounds for a router. And you can see here that there's it's a dual band router, most of them are today. It operates at 2.4 and 5. It's got four, this should be four times one gigabyte wire connection, not four gigabyte wire connections. And as get guest network and parental controls. USB ports where you can share files and you can share media over there. This, this is so you can set up some kind of like uh, network attached storage. You can uh, attach a storage device to this router and you can share it across the network. And one mesh technology compat compatible with TP Link One Mesh range extender and lets you form a seamless Wi Fi network with a single Wi Fi name. Now, generally speaking, when you add a range extender to a, a wireless network, you finish up with two network names. I don't find that a, a particular problem, but some people like to just have one name and they like to be able to move from one to a, one network to another quite seamlessly. So when choosing a router, you need to choose the right type for your internet connection, uh, whether it's ADSL, VDSL, or whether it's cable or fiber. And then you look at the router and you look at its features and if you needed the, the particular features, you obviously you choose a router that has those particular features. So I've just done a search for a mobile router. You can see there's several here, and you can see here uh, a lot of them are, are unlocked, which this means you can actually use them on different networks, so you're not com confined to a particular network provider. But basically, you'll find the features and everything else pr the same as you would for the for the other routers, but the only difference is the way they connect to the internet is via the mobile phone network and not via the telephone network or the cable network.
Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. It's gone on a bit longer than I, I thought it would. Uh, if you've got any comments on the video, then please leave them below. If you like the video, then click on the like button below. And if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel, then click on the subscribe button. And as I said at the beginning of the video, it's, it's part of a, a video series, uh, which I hope to make. But that really is dependent on the feedback. So please let me know in the comments below whether you consider it worthwhile or not worthwhile. So until next time, goodbye.